think I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I'm a man. Look down at your feet and tell me what you experience. Looks like workers' boots. Mm -hmm. Workers' boots. And I'm holding a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. What else do you see there? I look like I'm standing on a balcony mm -hmm. and overlooking a city. So, the more you describe, the more you'll see. So, what kind of city is this? What do you see? What do you imagine? It's dusk. Mm -hmm. It's kind of purpley and pink in the sky, and the balcony is iron. Mm -hmm. What kind of temperature is there? Is it warm or cool? It feels mild. Mm -hmm. Very good. And as you look out towards this place, do you see vehicles or anything going by? What is the city like? I'm too far away to see anything. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can see the sparkling lights. Sparkling lights. Do you feel that you're very high up? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking down over the city. How do you feel there? I don't really feel anything. I'm just kind of admiring the, mm -hmm. the view. All right. So as you admire the view, just tell me what details you take in. What do you notice? The color purple. Mm -hmm. Purple in the sky? Or somewhere else? Mm. I'm just seeing purple. Mm -hmm. Where do you imagine this purple comes from? What comes to mind? It looks kind of like a vortex. Mm -hmm. Where do you see this vortex? <coughs> Is it in the balcony or near you? No, it looks like a different scene. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's something in the distance. <coughs> Keep going. Keep describing it. Uh, maybe a volcano. A volcano. Very good. It looks like there's it's dusk and there's a mountain with um, dust coming out of it. It's, mm -hmm. It looks like maybe it has exploded. Mm -hmm. And the sky is purple. Mm -hmm. Now as you're watching this, how do you feel in that body? How old do you feel? I'm young. Mm -hmm. I can't be more than 20. Mm -hmm. I feel apathetic. Mm -hmm. I feel nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm just observing. Yes. I don't see any I don't see any life. I don't see any... In this life that you speak of, are you talking about life in yourself or life in, out there? Try to pinpoint it. Where this apathy comes from. I'm not sure. Okay. So let's find out a little bit more about this life. We're going to close this scene and I want you to go either backwards or forward in time to give you more idea of what this life is all about and who you are. I'm going to count from three to one. When I get to number one, I'll touch your forehead and you'll be at that scene. Take a deep breath in now. Three, going through time and space to find the next important scene. Two, and one. Be there now. Where are you?
I see a woman. Mm -hmm. She's holding a baby and there's like sun coming in the window. Mm -hmm. Now it's yellow. The room is yellow. Mm -hmm. But it's yellow because of the sun and she's holding the baby in the air and spinning it around. Mm -hmm. She has a... a uh, like a bonnet on the top of her head. She looks like a peasant. Mm -hmm. It's a very tiny room. And as the observer of this, are you watching the scene or are you one of, one of those people? I think I'm an observer. Okay. Take a look and see if you have a body. I don't think I do. Okay, so let's, let's see the importance of this scene. I'd like for you to just describe what's happening and what your surroundings are. Um, there's joy. The mother's immensely joyful mm -hmm. with this baby. And the room is yellow. Mm -hmm. There's The sun's very bright and it's coming through and it, the, it's a um, it's a very small room. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else in that room besides the mother and the baby? I don't think so. Okay. So let's find out who this mother and baby are. I'd like for you to go ahead and close this scene and let's continue to the next important scene of that lifetime. What happens next? Where are you? Mm, I'm not getting anything. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you close that scene. We're going to go back once again to that volcano. Close that scene and travel back to that scene with the volcano once again. And feel the difference between that mother and the baby in the scene with this volcano. I'm in Pompeii. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Everything's gone. I don't think I'm alive anymore. Mm -hmm. I think I'm looking at I think I'm looking at the aftermath. Mm -hmm. The city is gone. How are you feeling about that? I don't think I'm alive. I think that's why I don't feel despair. Mm -hmm. Why do you imagine you've disconnected yourself from that, those feelings? I think there was a lot of chaos and fear from the volcano. Mm -hmm. So from this vantage point, you'll be able to understand this life a little bit more. I'd like for you to go ahead and see different scenes from that life and tell me how this lifetime has affected you. I'm in a field with a pitchfork and I'm I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be working. Mm -hmm. What are you doing instead? <laughs> I'm thinking about a girl. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I'm supposed to be picking up the hay and cleaning up the hay and there's a girl. How old are you there? I'm young. I'm I'm male. Mm -hmm. I have brown pants on and like a peasant shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm quite handsome. Does this girl like you? Yes. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Let's skip to the next important scene.
We're getting married. Mm -hmm. Who's there with you? There's a priest mm -hmm. and we're outside in a field. It's just us. Mm -hmm. She has the same bonnet hat thing that the woman in the room had. Mm -hmm. Can you see her eyes? Yeah, but I don't recognize her. Okay. How do you feel about her? I love her. Mm -hmm. I love her a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that she said yes. Wonderful. So now let's skip to the next important scene of that same lifetime. What happens next? I'm back to the volcano. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. What's happened to you, your uh, beloved? Everything's been taken. Mm -hmm. What happened? See it as an observer. The ground, it was shaking. We didn't understand what it was. Mm -hmm. The buildings were just collapsing. There was a lot of screaming. I'm trying to I'm trying to gather the people. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to to do something. Mm -hmm. How old are you at that time? I'm still very young. Mm -hmm. I can't be more than 20. I want to do something, but I, I, I don't know what to do. I can't find my wife. And the ground is shaking. And there's smoke coming from the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And it the it's starting to spew. People are screaming it. There's chaos everywhere. So I'd like for you now to advance the last moment of your life in that lifetime. What happens at that last moment? Just observe it. I'm running. I'm trying to find her. Mm -hmm. I'm panicked. can't find her. Mm -hmm. Are you in the city? Are you out? It looks different. Mm -hmm. But I'm panicked. Mm -hmm. I'm looking in all the archways and I'm I'm running and I'm I'm trying to find her. I think she was the one with the baby. Mm -hmm. I don't make it. What finally takes your life? I get crushed by a building. Mm -hmm. Where is it that it crushes you? My head. And I hit 
the cobblestone. It doesn't kill me immediately, but I'm I'm badly injured. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to take your last breath in that lifetime and just disconnect from that body. And as you disconnect from that body, I'd like for you to go ahead and find your guide. Find your guide. Where do you go? I'm in the sky. Mm-hmm. She looks like a priest. Mm-hmm. Like Mother Mary, but a priestess. Mm-hmm. She's got a head hat, a tall white hat, Mm -hmm. and she's wearing a blue robe. She's glowing. Mm -hmm. What does she tell you? Her name is Sarah. Mm -hmm. What does she tell you about that life? She's handing me a heart, like the shape of a heart. Mm-hmm. What is the meaning of that heart? To experience the loss of love. Mm-hmm. To know the contrast. what it means to lose love, Mm -hmm. to understand the importance of love. Who did you lose in that lifetime? Um, It was my wife. I can't place her name. Mm -hmm. Starts with an I. Mm -hmm. Ingrid? Ingrid. So let's see where your guide takes you next. Where do you go? We're in the sky in the clouds. Mm -hmm. We're just flying in the sky. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything that you see and experience. She's holding my left hand. And as you're in the sky with your guide, what does your body look like? What form does it take? I feel like I'm still the male. Mm -hmm. I'm still his essence. Mm -hmm. Where does Sarah take you? We're on a shore Mm -hmm. with rocks. We're just playing in the sand. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Sarah? She's a good guide. Mm -hmm. Why is she taking you to this shore today? She's showing me a heart with three swords in it. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, the three swords in that heart? Not sure. Ask her.
Why does this heart have swords in it? And three of them, to be exact. Are these lifetimes? Are these loves? I don't want you to think about it. I want you to just know. I'm not getting anything. Okay. So do you take this heart? Oh, it's blocked energy. Mm-hmm. Are you carrying a, a blocked heart? Yes. Mm-hmm. From what lifetime have you carried this blocked heart? Many. Mm-hmm. Why do you choose to continue from lifetime to lifetime with this heart? Safety. Mm-hmm. What does Sarah say about that? Let it go. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to let this go? Yes. Okay. So I'd like for you, her to guide you. What do you do with that heart? What's blocking the energy? It's like there's a cage or steel case. Mm -hmm. My heart has been skipping a beat. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's as if I'm out of breath and it's because of this. This is why she's showing me this. Mm -hmm. I'm holding energy here and I need to let it go. It's your heart. It's the only one. The only person who can release it is you. Are you ready to release it or is something holding you back? No, I'm ready. Okay. So I'd like for you to tell me how it is that you release this energy. How do you remove this cage from your heart? She's telling me to open it, but I I don't know that I understand. Mm -hmm. Does this cage have a door? (laughs) She says, (laughs) that's only a perceived one. Mm -hmm. Have you also perceived a key or a lock? (laughs) There is no lock. (laughs) Just open the door. All right. Are you ready to open that door now? Yes. Let's see what happens. There's a bunch of canaries coming out. Mm -hmm. What happens next? I feel relieved. Mm -hmm. But you told me also that that heart had swords in it. Has that been released? Yes. Mm-hmm. Very good. What does that heart look like now? It needs to be repaired. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'd like for you to ask Sarah, your guide, how you can repair this heart today. What does she advise? Light. Mm-hmm. What is the best color light to transform this heart? White. Mm-hmm. Very good. Go ahead and begin to see that white light mending this heart. What happens? She's filling my heart, my chakra with light. Mm -hmm. Allow it in. Focus on that feeling of relief. Mm. 
can tell me when it's done. It is done. Very good. So now that this heart has been released from its cage and its swords, and it's full of light, where does Sarah want to take you now? Let's find out. Allow her to take you again by the hand. In a village with pots. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this. these pots. What are they used for? They're terracotta and we fill them with wine. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, these are discarded pots. They were rejected. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your own body there. What do you look like? A oh, man. Mm -hmm. I have black curly hair. How long is this hair? It's very short. Mm -hmm. I'm very dirty. Look at your feet and your clothing. I don't have any shoes. I'm very dirty. Mm -hmm. I'm a thief. I come here to try to steal the wine. Mm -hmm. Are you by yourself there? Yes, I'm, I'm very small. Mm -hmm. Very wiry. So let's find out what are you doing today. Stealing. Mm -hmm. Trying to. There's nothing to steal today. Mm -hmm. What do you do next? Now that you're not successful at this theft, where do you go? I'm walking down a cobble road. Mm -hmm. It's very narrow. I'm very thirsty. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? The pub. I'm not liked very much. Mm -hmm. What happens when you walk into that pub? How do they react to you? I'm an outcast. Mm -hmm. They know I'm a thief. Do they say something to you? No, but they're very judgmental. I feel judged. I feel shame. I'm not like them. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not good enough for them. What do these others look like? How would they trust? Fat and wealthy. Mm -hmm. Fat, fat. They're, they're fat and ego and fat with money and mm -hmm. fat. They laugh at me. How are they dressed? They're wealthy. Mm -hmm. What does their clothing look like? It's like linen and burlap. Mm -hmm. Is it colorful? No, it's that's colors of sand. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I don't think these people are, I don't think these people are wealthy. I think that my perception mm -hmm. is that they have more than me, so they are wealthy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's find out what happens after this. Continue and see what happens. What do you do after you're rejected by these men? I go to a shop. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to steal food. I'm like in a... Mm, like 
like a market. Mm -hmm. It's a market. Is it an outdoor market? Yes. Yes. I walked through like a walk, like a doorway to get to this market. Mm -hmm. There's chickens and mules. Are you noticed in this marketplace? I'm trying not to be. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to stay low. I don't want them to see me because I'm going to steal from them. Mm -hmm. I'm very hungry. So tell me what you do. Where do you go? I grab a chicken. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I grab a chicken and I grab some potatoes and I run. I'm not proud of this. Mm -hmm. Does anyone see you do this? No. Mm -hmm. I've done this many times. I, I, I think I'm homeless. Mm -hmm. I do this to eat. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to eat? I just go out in the woods. Okay. This is where you also sleep. Yeah, I have a, like a cave. Mm -hmm. It's not much. Okay. All right. So let's close this scene now. We're now going, going to the next very important scene from that lifetime. Something that makes a great impact on you. Be there now. Where are you? I'm in the woods and I'm old. Mm -hmm. I want to die. This has been a very hard life. So I'd like to, for you to find your place where you finally rest your body. What is this place? I'm in my cave. Mm -hmm. I'm very old. I have long white beard and white hair. Mm -hmm. All right. Take your last breath in that lifetime and just release your spirit from that body. You can see that life from a different perspective now. What was the purpose of living that life so... Independence. Mm -hmm. Did you mm. accomplish that? Yes, I was hard on myself. I didn't think I did it well. Mm -hmm. It was a hard life. So I'd like for you to look around and find your guide once again. Sarah's here and Gerard is here. Mm -hmm. Is Gerard another guide? Yes, he's my jokester. Mm -hmm. What do they have to say about this lifetime you've just lived? They're very proud of me. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick such a hard life just to be independent? Job well done. Mm -hmm. How do you rate yourself in that lifetime? I did okay. Mm -hmm. What advice do they have to give you? They're proud of me. Mm -hmm. They think I'm being too hard on myself. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out what happens when you decide to plan the lifetime of Amanda. I'd like for you to go ahead with your guides so they can take you to the planning place. Describe 
Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys, okay. <laughs> what is this place with monkeys? I'm like in a control room and there's monkeys monkeying around. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? I think this is how I feel about picking a life. Mm -hmm. It's a game. It is. Who else is there with you in this control room? Sarah and Gerard. Mm -hmm. Let's find out how it is that you plan this life of Amanda. What are the things that you need to do in this lifetime? Independence. Mm -hmm. What else do you know? Trust. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So how is it that Amanda is going to accomplish this? She's already doing it. Mm -hmm. Are there any players in her life that are going to help her? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's see how it is that she selects these others. Do they select her? It's mutual. It is. So we're like in a conference room. Mm -hmm. There's a council. How many are on that council? Twelve. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you feel in this room? Honored. Mm -hmm. These are very wise beings. They're here to assist you today? Yes, there's an older, older soul. Mm -hmm. Who is this older soul? Old mother. Mm -hmm. She's been with me a long time. Do any of these council beings talk to you about anything in particular? The changes. Mm -hmm. What is the time? Mm -hmm. Now is the time. Tell me more about that. What do you understand for them to mean about now is the time? Now is the time to incarnate. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Change is occurring. Great change. Great, great change is occurring. So why is it that it's important for you to incarnate during this very important time of change? To raise consciousness. Mm -hmm. This is a very old soul. She is here to raise consciousness. Mm -hmm. In what way does she do that? Many ways. Mm -hmm. Can you tell her in which ways she does that? Her being, mm -hmm. her words, her words are vibrational. Her energy, she is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. She's been told that before, but she doesn't understand what that means. What does being powerful mean to a human? She has been told that she is a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And she is she is the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm.
she is the calm as the chaos goes on around her. Has she done this before? Yes. Mm -hmm. She was shown the lifetime of Pompeii when she was in the middle of a very difficult time. Was she doing it there? Yes. Mm -hmm. She also did it when she was in a lifetime of the thief. Mm -hmm. How did she do it there? She was teaching people compassion. Mm -hmm. So now in this lifetime, she's chosen to work with energy, the Feng Shui, for example. Is she teaching basically how to keep the house peaceful in a stormy situation? She's always done this. Mm -hmm. She did it in Atlantis. Okay, what did she do in Atlantis? She was a priest. Mm -hmm. Very powerful energy priest. Would you show her a picture of that lifetime, please? She's trying to they're, they're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. They're manipulating energy in the wrong way. They're not supposed to do that. They won't listen to her. Mm It's chaos again. Mm -hmm. So does she put herself in the middle of chaos? Intentionally? Because of this superpower that she has? Yes. Mm. She is there to awaken those who are ready. Mm -hmm. She is the way shower. She is the calm, the beacon. She works with Saint Germain. Mm -hmm. What does Saint Germain have to say to her today? Continue. Mm -hmm. Who else does she work with? Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. What is Archangel Michael's role in her life? Strength. Mm -hmm. Protection. Mm -hmm. But she seems to get drained wherever she goes. She's even been using a necklace for protection. Why is it that she's so drained when she goes into all of this chaos when she goes into a store into a mall into a, a place with many people what is she doing with her energy she's giving it to them mm -hmm. because they need it mm -hmm. she's very powerful but how can she do the same thing without feeling the, so worn out meditate more meditate more so is there any way in particular that she needs to meditate in order to keep her from being depleted in energy? She needs to be in nature. Okay. The trees. Mm -hmm. She has a special bond with trees. They're very sacred. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know it, but she speaks the language. She is closely connected to the elementals. Well, she tells me that she speaks with houses, too. Everybody can do that. They just don't know. Mm. Everything is energy. Yes. Everything is energy. Everything is communicating with you. 
Mm-hmm. You just have to see it. But she wants to do it more. She wants to be more like her Professor Lynn that was able to see the energies. How she can. She, she can. How can you prove it to her? She needs to relax and trust. Mm-hmm. Meditate more. She needs to raise her vibration. She's attracting the wrong people. Okay, so how can she raise her vibrations? What's the way she would do it? She needs to change her diet. Okay. What is it in her diet that's not working? Dairy. Okay. What is the dairy doing to her? Lowering her vibration. Mm -hmm. It's dulling. Mm -hmm. It's weakening her vibration. How about the other stuff that she's eating? She needs to go easy on the gluten. Mm -hmm. It makes her energy dirty. Mm -hmm. It's not... It's not a clear, as clear of a conduit. So when she eliminates the dairy and cuts down on the gluten, how will that help her? What changes can she see? It won't be what she sees, but it will be what she experiences. Okay. She's a healer. Mm -hmm. She's always been a healer. Healing could be a very, very extensive uh, word to say. In which way does she heal? In this lifetime, it's to help with the new earth. Okay. She's here to continue, as many, many are doing, mm -hmm. to raise the vibration. And we've done it. We've done it. How close are we in this new earth? For those who are doing the work, they are there. Mm -hmm. She is there. Okay. She's there. So, if someone were to ask her, what's the difference in where she is and where they are, not in the new earth, what would be the differences? As she calls it, below the cross, mm -hmm. um, rage and anger, negativity, focusing on the wrong things, mm -hmm. power, greed, it's all the ego, mm -hmm. none of that matters. That is not, that is not the point. So the new earth is more of a vibration? Mm, it's a reality. Okay. It's a, it is a vibration, but it's a, it's a creation. Mm -hmm. You create it. Mm -hmm. But it's a reality. Okay. So when we were, before we had the session, we were talking about how to manifest things. Is that what we're talking about? Mm. Being able to create this different reality. Yes, but without the ego, mm -hmm. many on your planet think that manifestation is the car or the house mm -hmm. or the red bottom shoes. Mm -hmm. That is not This is a different, this new earth is elevation, it's energy, it's connectedness and oneness. Mm -hmm. And she's connected now. Yes, yeah, she slips. Mm -hmm. Everybody slips. But she's in it, 
and she's experiencing it. She's she's been manifesting little things. Those are those are gifts. Mm -hmm. Those are confirmation, mm -hmm. like the gas station. Yes. Confirmation to show her and every soul is powerful. Every soul has this ability. But this one, this one has the Midas touch. Mm -hmm. Well, she doesn't think so because she wants to be able to do a lot more. We have put, how do you say, parameters mm -hmm. on this one. Why is it that she's been closed up with her finances? Why does she have parameters? They are there to keep her in line mm -hmm. with the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Is this the karma in the finances that someone told her about? Yes. Yes. So it's is it actually karma or just um, no, it's putting the brakes on. She's very powerful and she can even control weather if she would want to. Mm -hmm. She can manifest and she has. She blew out her air conditioner and her microwave and her computer. That is how powerful she is. But she feels that she's not. That her intuition is almost not very good compared to others. Why does she have that she limitation? She needs to work on it. Okay, so what's the best way for her to open up her intuition? Remove those blocks that lacking of trust in herself. It's the meditation and the getting outside and connecting back to source. Mm -hmm. She allows, as many humans do, to get caught up in the human condition. And humans need to learn to untether. Those things do not serve you. They are creature comforts, mm -hmm. but we need to focus on humanity. We need to focus on the collective and kindness and compassion and giving to one another and her parameters are there as safeguards so that she does not lose her way in focusing on the wrong things. She is not here to focus on those 3D realities. She is here to focus on showing, guiding, and bridging those and raising their consciousness and lifting Gaia, raising the vibration to the new earth. But I don't think we want her going around like in that lifetime having to steal for her food and her creature comforts. Right now she's going in for her real estate license. <clears throat> she wants to be able to have enough money to move out of the city where she lives. Yes, she needs to move. Mm -hmm. Why has she been held back? Mm, it's been done for she, it was timing. She needed to... She wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Is she ready now? Yes. Okay. 
The timing was, she was too immature, too young, too, she wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. She lacked understanding and was still easily swayed by the 3D ways. Mm -hmm. It is why her relationship ended. He no longer serves her. What about her occupation? She's very good at what she does, but she can't seem to move ahead. Why are there parameters there? To hold her power back. Mm. But she's ready. Okay. What advice do you have for her? She needs to move. Mm -hmm. She needs to continue on her path of getting the message out. Many are not listening and this frustrates her. Mm -hmm. she's, she's educating from the fifth dimension to those who are in the third dimension and they don't understand. So which would be a best place for her to move to? California. She, she is needed there. They are further along and will listen. They will, they will understand her there. And as a collective, it will help Florida and California mm -hmm. are are two places that are really in Colorado mm -hmm. are really helping to lift and raise consciousness and the energy and the vibration mm -hmm. and the earth needs it right now. So will she be doing her feng shui or for her real estate there? She'll be doing both. Both. She, the people need it. They don't, they don't understand. They don't understand energy mm -hmm. because they can't see it. It is the most powerful tool that we need to all be working with, especially in the new earth. Mm -hmm. The new earth is joyous and brilliant. Mm -hmm. And if they could if they could understand that this has been created for them, from them, for them, more people will come along. It's happening. Mm -hmm. 2019 is the pivot point. This shift has occurred and it's rapidly happening. What Things do I will look different. They will be brighter, mm -hmm. shinier. It will feel joyous and happy. Love. Mm -hmm. Will she be moving in 2019? No. No. Three years. In three years, very good. So in those three years, she'll be able to do her real estate and the feng shui? Yes, yeah, she will be very good at it. Okay. She wondered if Professor Lin has been helping her. He's with us now. Mm. She's never met him, but is there a message that he has to give her? Because she wants to be able to experience what he experienced when he walked into a, a place. What message does he have for her? He's very proud of her. Mm -hmm. She takes her work very seriously. She stays true to the teachings. She is a purist. She understands the sacredness 
and honors the time and the meaning of the energy and she values the transformation that it gives and offers people and she understands that it's not only about raising the vibration of the individual but the energy that surrounds people. The environment is incredibly important as an incubator for your soul and your energy. If your home environment, your spaces you inhabit are negative, they drain you and lower your vibration. She speaks and feels homes, which is just energy. She is simply communicating with the energy. And Professor is with her, guiding her and honors her for carrying on his lineage and his legacy and encourages her to carry on, continue, do the work. It is needed now more than ever. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alba. So let's talk a little bit about her body. There's some issues that she has been feeling in her body. Her pain in her shoulder blades, the issue with her eyes. Is this coming from this lifetime or is it coming from another place? They are past lives. Okay. Can we identify the origin of the issue with the back? She was stabbed. Mm -hmm. Who stabbed her in that life? It was her wife. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was her wife. She stabbed him for he was a king. Uh, In that lifetime, she was a king. He was a very fair and just king. Mm -hmm. And why is she bringing that into this lifetime? Why does she have to remember that? Courage. Mm. Don't let your guard down. Mm -hmm. Does she need to have that reminder in order to remember this? No. No. Can we remove that now? Yes. Okay. But we re before we remove it, let's find out who his wife was. Does she know who the wife is in this lifetime? Yes, it's Lance. Mm hmm He wanted, she wanted his money mm -hmm. and power. Is she ready now to forgive? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's go inside of her body, her etheric body. And I'm going to put my hand over her heart. And let's bring out any of those feelings that have been holding back this king, allow this forgiveness of this soul, understanding that she came back here once again as a do-over, and this time she came needing his help. Just remove all of that. 
You don't need to hold on to that any longer. And tell me that when I have it. That is good. Very good. Thank you so much. And now let's take those shoulder blades. What would you like to put instead of that pain in the shoulder blades? What would you like to replace it with? Love. Love. Very good. What is the representation of love for you? Pink. Pink. Very good. So I'd like for you to go ahead and see a beautiful pink light spreading out over the shoulders, going deep within the structure of these shoulders. And as this pink goes into the shoulders, I want you to see what it does to the lifetime of this king. What happens? He's joyous. Mm, very good. Very good. So let's disconnect from that lifetime now. And let's focus in on this entity's right eye. She was stabbed with an arrow. Mm -hmm. What lifetime is this? Lemurian? Mm -hmm. Lem Lemurian? Mm -hmm. She was a warrior. Mm -hmm. What is the representation of this pain in the eye? Why does she bring that with her? That's to remind her. To protect herself when she goes out. Mm -hmm. Is it working? It reminds her to go home. Mm -hmm. That's not the reason, though, is it? That she brought it with her. No. Go ahead and see what triggers that reminder. Stress. Mm -hmm. Fear. How can this very powerful eye in the storm handle that now? Now that she understands that. Does she need to have that reminder now knowing that she is peace? No. No. So are you ready to remove that, that arrow from the eye? Yes. All right, go ahead and remove that arrow from the eye. And I want you to just dissolve it with love. And as you do, you'll be able to clearly see who sent that arrow into your eye. Ah. Oh. It's Amy. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why has she brought that souvenir now that she understands this? Contrast. Mm -hmm. um, sisterhood. Mm -hmm. We were sisters. Okay. Can you forgive this other warrior? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead deep into your heart and see if there's any remnants of this anger. No. No. Very good. So what would you like to replace this arrow with now? Clarity. Very good. What would you like to use to represent clarity? Blue. Mm -hmm. All right. So go ahead and begin sending that blue in. It could be a, a mist. It could be a laser. What would you like to use? A mist. Very good. 
Put a nice refreshing mist of blue into your eye and let's begin to just clear out any of the blockages that you have there, including your own blockage of seeing that all of those people that have caused you stress are the main reason you're here in this lifetime. You're here to bring all of this peace and comfort to all of those to awaken them as the eye of the storm. You are the one who sits still as all those around you are in turmoil. You send out that peace. So do we need to bring all of that turmoil in any longer as Amanda goes through life with all of these people? No. No. So I'd like for you to go ahead and envision what this eye of the storm would look like to you, how it would feel, how it would sound to be in this place of standing still with this powerful, powerful ability to calm all around you. And as those around you are calmed, you're able to project this power that you have to awaken them. How does that feel? Wonderful. Wonderful, good. She has three beloved cats that she loves so much. Right now, Tabby is chewing her arms bald. What's happening with Tabby? She's stressed. Mm -hmm. What is causing the stress in her? The new cat. Mm -hmm. Can we communicate with Tabby today to explain what's happening? Yes. All right. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get the number three, I'm going to touch your forehead, and I'd like for you to connect with Tabby now. One, two, and three. Good afternoon, Tabby. Hello. Tabby, why are you so stressed about the new cat? She replaced me. Mm. And what is it that you felt that you're missing now? Love. Love. All right. Take a deep breath in. Amanda, speak with Tabby. What do you want to say to Tabby? She is greatly loved. Mm-hmm. She is very, very much loved. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Tabby, what do you say back? Do you feel Amanda's love? I do. She saved me. Mm -hmm. But I feel replaced. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Amanda, did you replace Tabby? No. No. Tell her the truth. I did not replace her. I love her very much. Mm -hmm. She is a part of our family. Why is it that you give so much attention for this new one? Why does Winnie get so much attention? She doesn't get more attention. Mm -hmm. I think that Tabby feels that she does. Yes, that's why I asked. Take a deep breath in. Tabby, did you think that Winnie was getting more attention? She does. She does. But you just heard Amanda saying she doesn't. It's just different. Mm -hmm. She loves you just the same. I don't think she does. Mm. She saved me. I love her for that. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel replaced. What would make you feel better? What do you need from Amanda? More love and attention. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Amanda, do you are willing to give this beautiful being more attention? Of course. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to look at that heart that you mended not long ago. That heart that had been engaged. And I want you to go ahead and start sending out that beautiful white light towards Tabby. 
And I want to ask Tabby, do you feel that love? Yes. Do you feel, does it feel any different? It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Good. So, Deb, Tabby, can you stop chewing on yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So I'd like for you now to disconnect from Tabby. Disconnect completely. And let's do a scan on this body from head to toe. And let's see if there's anything in this body that we haven't addressed that we need to address now. How does this body look? There's something in the, the back. All right, let's take a look at the back. I want you to focus in on it. What part of the back are we talking about? It's the upper back. All right. So I'd like for you to just focus in on it. and it, it, Let's find out if this something in the back is something that Amanda placed there or something attached to her. I think it's a thought form. All right. So let's find out what thought created this thing. I want you to dive deep into this place. And I want you to just feel it out and tell me if there's any words or sentences that jump out of this place. Scarcity. Scarcity. Very good. So I want you to go ahead and begin repeating that in your mind and following it back to the origin. My mother. Mm -hmm. What did you place there from your mother? Black. Mm -hmm. Fear. Mm -hmm. Scarcity. Not enough. Not enough. Is that something that Amanda wants to continue having yeah. in her life? No. So in order for her to change that, we need to transform that scarcity into something else. Abundance. Abundance, okay. So how do you represent abundance? Red energy. Very good. So I'd like for you to begin using that red energy and put some, red, some lots of love in there and abundance. And let's begin to focus on that spot. And tell me what happens when you focus abundance and love into that spot. I'm seeing a stove. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Professor showing me a stove, mm -hmm. which is abundance. Very good. Very good. Is there any other place that she needs the abundance in her, in her life? In her solar plexus. All right. So go ahead and send that into her solar plexus also. What color? Green. Mm -hmm. Send that green abundance and I'd like for you to just add love to it and tell me how that feels full full so let's continue with the scan and see if her body needs anything else or are we complete today that is all that is all very good thank you so I'd like to know what is the reason you brought her here to this session her and I have an understanding mm -hmm. of her purpose to guide those who are ready for the new earth, mm -hmm. to show them without affliction or fear the way and the possibility of the enormous changes that are rapidly occurring and for those who are ready she is a beacon they will find her and she will show them the way the council is applauding her. They are Pleiadian, Pleiades, mm -hmm. 
The council is Pleiadian? Yes. Mm -hmm. They are... They are giving her information and energy and downloads Mm -hmm. to guide to the new earth. Wonderful. Is there anything else that we need to know about the new earth or how to prepare for it? People need to change their outlook. They need to be more positive. They need to stop watching the news. They need to get off their phones and off technology. The dark forces, the dark masters are controlling the internet and the dark masters are realizing that they are losing with the more people that can they are so addicted to their technology that they are losing their way and getting lost they need to connect with other people to raise their own vibration and they need to connect with Gaia, they need to connect with nature and they need to change their diets the food is contaminated the water has been contaminated Be mindful of what you put into your body and breath work. You need to do more breath work and movement to get the energy in your body moving to get the circuits flowing. Mm -hmm. So exercise? Mm -hmm. Just walking. Mm -hmm. Walking with others. Connecting with nature. Moving water. Moving water has moving energy in it and it's a power source for many on the earth. Mm -hmm. And Oneness, compassion. The time is now. There are many angels and guides and powerful beings on the planet to show those the way, but they need to wake up. Now is the time. Very good. Are we complete? Yes. Thank you so much. Completely alert, feeling wonderful all over. <laughs> wow. That was crazy. Mm, you did great. Better than great. That's great. The visions that I had of the new earth. <laughs> Tell me about it. I don't want to cuss, but it was fucking awesome. (laughs) Hold on to these. Let's ground you a little bit. Wow. What did you see? It sparkles. Mm. It's... With energy. It's... it's, That's the wrong way to describe it. It's like... um, the tree leaves are greener and Mm. there's like colors that I've never seen before like 
different kinds of reds and pinks and mm. flowers. It, it looked like paradise. Nice. I want to go back there. <laughs> and Pompeii, oh my God. Yeah. It. All I kept seeing was the spewing coming out of the volcano. And nobody and knew what it was. This. No, that was the thing is, is I was standing on this balcony and looking down and like the ground was yeah. shaking and they didn't know what it meant and they didn't know what was, they didn't realize that the shaking was from the volcano mm -hmm. and it was just chaos and it was, uh, I was just standing there mm -hmm. and the, like everybody's running around and screaming and I'm just standing there sipping a cup of coffee. <laughs> I don't know why I was just sip, but sipping coffee. That was bizarre. Oh. Wow. You want to share this? You think it's good? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember everything. <sighs> I remember Pompeii and the... Yeah. Oh, the new earth. Wow. Beautiful, huh? Well, and what's so crazy is that I talk about it on my podcast... I'm talking about like, oh, you should eat better and you should, and it's like I'm a stream of freaking consciousness. Nobody's listening. <laughs> but you were told that they kind of put brakes on you. Oh. They set some parameters so you wouldn't go to them. Yeah, they were showing me like I'm trying to run mm -hmm. and I'm tied down like, no, no, no. Too fast. Too fast. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Like, I'm yeah. like, no, 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 I can go. Yeah. But what I found out in some of the sessions is that they do, they do decide the timing. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's not our timing. It's when it's supposed to be. Yeah. And like, I felt like, uh, um, I didn't see this, but I felt like I had training wheels on <laughs> and like, no, no, no. These are your wheels are on here for a reason. Yeah, that's something. And you're not ready yet. Like it's all there and you're ready to go, but they're not ready for you. Mm, interesting. Which makes sense now. After yeah. what you've told me, it makes sense. Well, and it's interesting the eye of the storm thing mm -hmm. because there's all it seems like there's always chaos going around me and I'm just always like, okay. Yeah. How long do you think this was? How did it feel to you? 45 minutes. We're at an hour and a half right now. Oh my God. It's so bizarre. I always see that on the videos. I'm like, clearly they know that it's been an hour and a half. <laughs> 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 wow. I am never going to forget those visions of the new earth. Wow. Amazing, huh? Well, and it's, you know, I've seen other videos that you've done with the new earth on it, but... Mm -hmm. And now it's like the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know if I'm going to be a part of all that, but... Well, you were told you were. Well, I'm in it. Yeah, you're in it. But, like, what I was seeing, like, wow. Yeah. Like, that's the consolation prize. That's amazing. Cool. All right, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're still flying. Yeah. Um, what was interesting is that in Pompeii and Atlantis... I was above it all, mm. like, um, not above it all, like yeah, you were ego thing, kind of watching like my down. vantage point yeah. of the calm, like yes. looking down at it yeah. and just seeing, I like was seeing Atlantis mm -hmm. <laughs> just fall into the ocean. Amazing. That was, forgot about that. And my friend Amy stabbed me in the eye and she was my sister. Which was bizarre. We were like, we look like Xena warrior women. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's funny because it's like a thing with women, right? I'm a warrior. <laughs> I can really say that now. <laughs> so when you came here, I think you were a little concerned that you weren't going to be able to be hypnotized. Yeah, I, um, and I've seen this in your, your groups, <laughs> you know, people saying, oh, I want to find somebody else and uh, don't do it. Um, I, I went to another practitioner and I really struggled and my ego was really getting in the way and I couldn't shut it off and um, I I wouldn't do it. I would just hire Alba. 
Thank you. Um, Thank you for that seal of approval. Well, and wow, I mean, just to see the new earth and to, Mm. and we're already experiencing it. We're already like, it's not like it's, you're here and they're there. We're already experiencing it, but it's, it was the, it was the feeling. It's the, it's the consciousness of it all. Yeah. Um, Wow. And you were told you need to be at nature more. You need to be, people need to just stop watching the news, get off the internet, get off your phones, walk in nature, walk with other people, connect. It's interesting because we were talking a little bit about that before we did all this. And um, yeah, they were showing me like the technology, how we're like this and like... um, Stuff coming out. Like, ah! You know, like that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> like dark forces. They kept saying dark forces. Yeah. Um, and the news, like, you know, kind of mm-hmm. scary things, which is interesting. Alba and I both intuitively, I stopped watching TV seven years ago. Yeah. I, I don't even own a TV. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, and the technology where everybody's always down on their phone and they're not connecting with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, they were showing like the vision that I got was that, you know, when you're with someone, you're sharing energy Mm -hmm. with them. And if you're like this, you're basically shut down. Right. So you're not sharing energy. Um, Yeah. Which is the reason why I'm doing the gatherings to get people out of their house and meet with other people. And, uh, that's where we met for the first time. mm -hmm. We had a gathering in North Carolina and, uh, it was, that's really the intention is get out and be with other people Mm -hmm. because, um, like-minded people. like-minded people not like going out to the mall and hanging out with everybody but like-minded people who are also looking for companionship and just a day of just being able to be yourself and authentic well and what i was seeing is like when we connect it's it's literally like we're morphing together and mm-hmm. so you start down here but you connect with others and like kind of like yeah. um this lifting and um we're we were really losing that because of technology mm-hmm. and, yeah. and the news and stuff like that. So it was great. Oh, the other thing is, is they were showing me that I have a connection with trees, which is so funny because I knew that, like, I always tell people to hug trees and, you know, talk to trees and uh-huh. name your trees. Yes. And like, they were showing me how the trees were like, you know, come hug me. Like, Isn't so that beautiful? That was, yeah. So, you know, just everything is consciousness. They were showing me yeah. that the water has consciousness and the trees have consciousness. Yeah. And literally everything. Everything's rocks, alive. Everything is alive. Everything. And, yeah. Um, and when we came, when she came to me, we were talking about this because you work with houses mm-hmm. and the house, your house is alive. So tell everybody what you do because it's so fascinating. Yeah, so I'm an advanced feng shui practitioner. I've been doing it for 20 years and I still work under a grandmaster to this day. And um, I apparently can see the energy. I have to work with that a little bit, but um, I communicate with houses. Like I will go into meditation and uh, a house will come in and, and, you know, one just came in to me and was peacocking, you know, like doing this to me and... Um, I got confirmation from the homeowner that they had just remodeled and finished their house. And so mm-hmm. the, the house was letting me know that it was done and, and that I've got numerous stories that are like that. Yeah. And um, just the energy of, of I, I read floor plans and um, just that was really interesting too. just seeing how um, how much our spaces influence us and our etheric bodies. Mm-hmm. And if you're, you know, you were kind of talking about it, about your house, about how you're, you're not jiving right, right now, now. Yeah. And how that affects you. They were showing me, mm-hmm. um, how it's like opposing magnets. If you're not caring for your home and your space and the mm-hmm. environments that you inhabit, it's, it's like opposing magnets and how it can drag you down mm-hmm. and your home's supposed to be a sanctuary. It's supposed to be a sacred space. Yes. So that was really cool to see that. Yeah. So how do people get a hold of you? Because you've got a great service, uh, for everybody. You, you do this remotely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anywhere in the world you can contact Amanda and she could help you with your home. 
Yeah, I'm 100% virtual. Um, you can just go to my website, which is uh, interiorvibes.com. That's the best way to find me. And all of my appointments are, are done virtually. I basically counsel you and, and read your floor plan, tell you what's showing up. And mm -hmm. it's really great validation because like Alba was saying that I'm traveling all the time and like I can see her floor plan. I'm like, yeah, because of that right there. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to put some mirrors up right now so my house will be happier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I can uh, read your floor plan. I'll let you know what you're experiencing. And it's great validation because you might think you're crazy that something keeps showing up. And in mm -hmm. fact, it's not. Um, and then I, you know, coach you and guide you in how to uh, develop a relationship with your home and change that energy. And the transformations are incredible that people experience. It's really quite fun. It's, it's fun being in the woo world. Yeah. So if you would like a session with me, a uh, hypnosis session, just go to my website, albawyman.com, go to the newsletter page, sign up, and once a month, approximately, you will get a newsletter, and it has ca links to calendars. You need to click on that link very quickly, very, very quickly, and it pops up whatever sessions are available. I have very limited sessions compared to the amount of people on my mailing list. So you got to be really fast. And uh, if you can't get a session with me, meet me at one of my gatherings. I'm doing them all around the world. They're all t totally unique and different because each group brings their own personality. So <clears throat> what happens in one gathering is totally different than, than another one. So uh, try to see me there and so we could uplift the world one gathering at a time with all these magnificent people that show up. So I hope you enjoyed this session. It was really fantastic. Um, I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. So thank you for watching. Bye. Mm.